the Lord and greatly to be praised. How appropriate are these words that we sang today? That God is great. Well, I'm so glad I met some of you. I met Orlando over there, Peter here, Maxine over there, Chris over there. So I'm glad you're all here today. And uh, let's hear what the Lord has for us tonight. Well, according to a legend, a king once placed a heavy stone in the roadways. Then he hid and waited to see who would remove the stone. Many who came by loudly blamed the government for not keeping the highways clear. But none assumed the duty or responsibility of pushing the obstacle out of the way. At last, a poor person stopped, rolled it into the garden. Lo and behold, to his surprise, he found a big bag full of gold embedded in the road beneath the spot where the rock had been. A note said it was the king's reward for anyone who removed the troublesome object. So too, our king, the king of kings, the king of the ages, the king of the universe has hidden a blessing under every trial. You see, the obstacles on our path in life are placed there for a purpose. By them, God tests our faithfulness, turns our attentions heavenward, and gives us opportunity for spiritual reward. Hidden today under the rock of the trial, that has brought you very low is a special blessing. But the question is, are you among those people who blame God for allowing trials in your life? Or are you among the few who believe that God has hidden a special blessing under the rock of your trial? Those are the two kinds of people we'll see today. What well, this brings me to the heart of the message God has given me from his word to deliver to you at this special hour in your life and my life. Please, I want you to pay very close attention to it, not just with your heart, not, a, not just with your head, but more importantly with your heart, where the Holy Spirit is ready and resolved to plant the seed of God's precious and powerful word in order to change genuine born-again believers among us here today, more into the glorious likeness of Jesus Christ, who is the Lord and lover and leader of the church, and to convict unbelievers among us here today of their sin of unbelief, gently and graciously leading them to genuine repentance and personal saving faith in Jesus Christ, who is the seeker and savior of lost sinners. So here's our message in a nutshell. Please, I want you to listen closely to it with an open heart and an open mind. Listen, my friend, here's the message. Most often, the trials and troubles God allows in the lives of believers in Jesus Christ are but blessings in disguise. I repeat, most often, the trials and troubles God allows in the lives of believers in Jesus Christ are but blessings in disguise. To put it simply, no trial, listen, is without God's blessing. Folks, friends, faithful followers of Christ among us here tonight, and fellow believers in, in the family and fold of God, in the fellowship and flock of God, the Bible is going to faithfully and freshly remind us from the life of David, the shepherd boy, the sweet psalmist of Israel, the king of Israel, and the prophet of God, that no trial is indeed without God's blessing. When Kitty was praying, she began by talking about the trials we face in life. That was a preparation for the message. 
I believe most of us here have some kind of trial in our lives. David believed God's teaching and lived it. That is the teaching that no trial is without God's blessing in his life through the help of the Holy Spirit. David found himself in a difficult situation where he felt totally forsaken. But he turned to God and rolled his burden on the Lord. Guess what David found after rolling his burden to God? He found divine favor and divine blessings. So please, if you have your Bibles today, turn them to Psalm 142. Will you please listen carefully as I recite the word of the Lord from Psalm 142 from the new <laughs> I'm, I'm, from the new I'm, from the updated <laughs> New American Standard Bible. The Bible says in Psalm 142, listen carefully to what the Bible says to us. It says, Masculine of David. Or masculine of David, when he was in the cave, a prayer. I cry aloud with my voice to the Lord. I make supplication with my voice to the Lord. I pour out my complaint before him. I declare my trouble before him. When my spirit, when my, when I was, when my spirit was overwhelmed within me. You knew my path. In the way where I walk, they have hidden a trap for me. They have hidden a trap for me. Look to my, look to my right and see. For there is no one who regards me. There is no escape for me. No one cares for my soul. I cry out to you, O Lord. I said, you are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. Give heed to my cry, for I am brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they are too strong for me. Bring my soul out of prison, so that I may give thanks to your name. The righteous will surround me. For you will deal bountifully with me. The righteous will surround me. For you will deal bountifully with me. So this is the word of God to the people of God. May the Lord add his blessing to the recital of his holy word. Well, Psalm 142 is the fifth of the last eight psalms of David recorded in the Bible. The last eight psalms of David are from Psalm 138 to 145. In Psalm 142, David was overwhelmed and desperate. He felt cornered by his enemies. And worse still, he felt no one cared what happened to him. Amen. Have you ever felt that no one cared what happened to you? Yes. Well, David was there, yeah. so he can relate to you, my sister. Through prayer, David pulled out of his tailspin and was reminded that God not only deeply cared for him, but that God also had hidden a special blessing, a blessing beyond his work of trial. And I believe today that Jesus Christ, who is the same yesterday and today, yes and forever, is willing and waiting to do something similar in your life and my life tonight. Today, if you pay careful attention to what the Holy Spirit is saying to you, you will also discover that there is a special blessing hidden under the rock of your trial. So now please allow me to share four very simple yet significant lessons from this psalm to see for yourself that indeed no trial is without God's blessing. First of all, notice what the Holy Spirit reveals to us about the circumstances of David. Mark this world, my brothers and sisters, 
circumstances of life are the crucible in which God tests our faith in him. I tell you, friends, David's circumstances were not only difficult and distressing, but dire and desperate. His circumstances are the crucible in which God is going to use to test his faith in him. And the question is, will David pass the test? And will you pass the test? In the circumstances that you are facing today. In fact, it appears that David's situation for the moment at least seems hopeless without God's supernatural intervention. Talk about facing trying and troubling, troubling circumstances in life in which God trusts your faith. David is in the midst of one right here. But you say, how do you know that? Well, I'm so glad you asked. Please notice what the Bible says in the superscription or the title of this song, which, by the way, is verse 1 in the Hebrew Bible. If you read the Hebrew Bible, what we see as the superscription is actually verse 1 in the Hebrew Bible. The Bible says, Masculine of David, when he was in the cave, a prayer. Now, the Hebrew word for mask, the, the Hebrew word masculine, indicates that, they, that this song contains instruction of godliness. David calls this psalm a masculine, simply put, a song of instruction because of the good and godly lessons he had himself learned on his knees in prayer. And now he decides to teach others like you and like me. And what will be the one, one of the lessons he will be teaching us? Well, David will teach us principally by example how to order our prayers in times of distress and difficulty. So we, we can benefit from this song because each of us here has some trouble, some problem, some burden, and some difficulty or thorn in the flesh to contend with. So we can benefit from David's example of ordering his prayer in, time, in his time of distress. Once the disciples said to the Lord Jesus, the son of David, Lord, teach us to pray. And here David gives us a valuable lesson by recording his own experience from which we can also learn to order our prayers to Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, of whom we have sung, sung that he is so good. He's not only good, he's also a prayer answering God. Yes. Now to emphasize how dire and desperate, difficult and distressing David's circumstances were, the Bible specifically tells us that David offered this song of instruction when he was in the cave. If you accept it today, David was a caveman at this point in his life. He was not in a comfortable palace. He was in a cave. Because so, the question is, why was David in a cave? Did he not have a house? Did his parents not have a house for him to live in? But David was in a cave because Saul, the jealous and insecure king of Israel, was pursuing David to take his life. So this song dates from the dates when Saul was sorely persecuting David, and David himself was in soul trouble. How many of you have soul trouble? So this song was written when David was hiding from King Saul in the caves, yeah. like the ones at Adamo. If you read some uh, First Samuel chapter 21, uh, 22, verse 1, there was a cave David hid in. And there was another cave in First Samuel chapter 24 at Engedi. David offered this prayer in one of these caves. We don't know the exact cave. Now, remember the point here is this. Circumstances, circumstances are the crucible in which God 
stirs the faith of the believer in Jesus Christ. So my question to you is, what circumstances are you fa facing today? Do you feel like your life is being pursued into the cave of discouragement, the cave of disappointment, the cave of depression and defeat in life? Do you feel your life is being chased into the cave of failure and forgetfulness? Please, if you are a believer in Jesus Christ, take heart because there is a special blessing yeah. under the rock of your trial. Amen. Now, having shown us the circumstances of David, the Holy Spirit now speaks of the cry of David in verse 1. Instead of throwing in the towel, walking away from God, blaming God, giving up on God, calling it quits, in his desperate and difficult circumstances, the Bible tells us David turns his attention heavenward and cries to the Lord his God. Please listen. Crying out to God in our desperate circumstances releases God's supernatural help. This is what David is going to do. He's going to cry to God because what? He's seeking God's, the release of God's supernatural help in his circumstances. Notice what the Bible says in verse 1. It says what? I cry aloud with my voice to the Lord. I make my supplication with my voice to the Lord. Notice everything is in the first person. He says, I cry, my voice, I make my voice. What's the point? The point here is this. That if you are a genuine born again believer in Jesus Christ, you have the awesome privilege of bringing your burdens and cares directly to the throne room of God. You don't have to wait for a pope or a priest. You don't have to go to a pope or a priest to help you to pray. You can go directly to the throne room of the Heavenly Father through Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. And David didn't wait till the anointed high priest came to the cave to be a goal between, between him and God before he would pray to God. If he had waited, it would have been the longest wait ever of his life. Now watch this. David, in the loneliness of the cave, could use his voice as much as he pleased. When there was no one in the cave seeking his blood, David with all his soul engaged in seeking the Lord his God earnestly and fervently. Notice he dwells upon the fact that he spoke aloud in prayer to God. He dwells on that fact. There are times we can pray silently. But David says, at this time in my life, I let my voice loose. I'm crying out loud to the Lord. That is why he repeats my voice. I make supplication with my voice. I cry aloud with my voice. Now the Hebrew word translated cry aloud is the act. The basic meaning of this word is to cry for help in time of distress. Remember I told you that crying out to the Lord in our desperate need, it's a way to release the supernatural help of God. And so that is why this word is used. David chose this word because he's seeking what? The supernatural help of God to be released into his circumstance. It is almost exclusively used in reference to a cry from a disturbed heart in need for some kind of help. Now the question is, why was David crying aloud to the Lord his God for his help in this time of distress? Well, I told you first of all that he's seeking what? A supernatural release of God's help into his circumstance. Secondly, David is crying aloud to the Lord because he knew that hidden under the rock of his trial is a special blessing God is waiting to give him. So what about you, my friend? Are you convinced 
that hidden under the rock of your trial that you are facing today is a special blessing God is waiting to release into your life. And if so, are you crying out to Jesus to release that supernatural help into your life? Well, having shown us the circumstances of David, having also spoken of the cry of David, the Spirit now sets before us the complaint of David in verses 2 to 4. Now, please listen carefully now, as David is now about to lay open before the Lord his God everything that burdens and distresses him. Remember when Kitty was, uh, started praying, she said, I had a tough week. And I'm just going to lay it all open before the Lord. Well, this is what David did in his complaint before the Lord. In other words, David is going to spread the whole matter weighing on his heart before God as Hezekiah the king later did with a letter from Sennacherib, the Assyrian king who came to attack Jerusalem. When he took that letter, he said, I'm, I'm taking it to God. I'm spreading it before God. Well, David didn't take a letter. Everything was on his heart. And he said, Lord, I'm going to open my heart and lay everything open before you tonight. I didn't know if it was in the night that he prayed. but <laughs> So David's complaint before God was very candid, very clear, and concise. David he didn't beat around the bush as he bears his soul before the Lord God. Would you please listen again to what the Bible says as David bears his soul before Yahweh. He says, I pour out my complaint before you. I declare my trouble before, uh, no, I pour out my complaint before him. I declare my trouble before him. When my spirit was overwhelmed within me, you knew my path. In the way where I walk, they have hidden a trap for me. Look to my right and see, for there is no one who regards me. There is no escape for me. No one cares for my soul. I tell you folks, David was laying it all open before the Lord. Now it is very important for us to understand what is meant by the word, word complaint. First of all, notice that the Bible makes it very clear that David is not making a complaint against God, but before God. In other words, we may complain to God, but not of God. The Hebrew word for complaint also means to meditate, to muse, to speak to, or talk with someone, converse aloud with someone. So the word for complaint conveys the idea of going over a matter in one's mind that is rehearsing it, whether inwardly or outwardly. So David, he did it outwardly. He said, I'm not going to keep it in my mind. I'll let it out. So what the Bible is teaching us here is that in the midst of his trials, David says, Lord, it's time for me to have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with you. It's time for me to converse aloud with you, to lay open before you everything that is weighing on my heart in this trying time of my life. He says, Lord, it's time for me to speak aloud my mind before you and spread open the secret wounds of my heart. Now, the believer in Jesus Christ, when was the last time you took time in the midst of your trials to have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with Jesus? where you gently lay open everything before him that is weighing on your heart. The Bible says David pours out his complaint before the Lord. The question is, what would have happened had, if David had poured out his complaint before men? What would have happened to him? Well, if David had poured out his complaint before men, he might only receive contempt from the proud. Right. You know when something is weighing on your heart and you go to somebody who is proud and you pour out your heart to, to that person. That person sometimes may be rolling 
his eyes or her eyes, pouring contempt on you. Right. Or David may have received hard-heartedness hard from the careless or pretended sympathy from the false. Some people are not caring about you and they, they will give you pretended sympathy as if they care about you. Well, David knew that he was in a situation where he didn't have to go to man. He had to go to the Lord. So David resolved to pour out his complaints before the Lord alone. Why? Because David also knew that the Lord alone has hidden a special blessing under the rock of his trial and is willing and waiting to give that to David. And in pouring out his complaint before God, David first tells God about his troubles. Now David had a habit of telling God, the Lord his God, all of his troubles. If you read all the Psalms of David, whenever trouble came on David, he didn't hide. He told God, he tells God like it is. He was actually doing what the hymn writer will later write about. I must tell Jesus all of my troubles. Let's all say, I must tell Jesus all of my troubles. Now the question is, are you in the habit of telling Jesus all of your troubles? While in pouring out his complaint before God, David secondly shows us how to truthfully share our hearts with God. David truthfully shares his heart with God, saying, literally, my spirit fainted. Say, Lord, I'm almost done. <laughs> I'm overwhelmed in this situation. Now the question is, are there complaints you keep from Jesus? Feelings you consider inappropriate to bring to Jesus? Well, David didn't have that problem. He just lays it all out before God. Furthermore, in pouring out his complaint before God, David candidly talks to God about the trap that has been hidden in his way and how he felt totally abandoned. David says, it is well for me to know that you know what I don't know. All right. But I'm in this situation where nobody is pleading my cause and nobody is protecting me. He says, Lord... No one is concerned whether I live or die. I'm cast out as an outcast. No soul cared for my soul. And I dwell in a no man's land where none cared to have me and none cared about me. Talk about being totally abandoned in your hour of need. No friend, no helper, no pitying heart. That was where David was. Someone has said, man has many friends in prosperity, one only in adversity. One only in adversity. And if that one is not God, you are in a bigger trouble. I personally thank God for teaching us how to pour out our complaint before him through the life of David. If God kept complaint box, what concerns, what cares, what complaints will you put into it? Please carefully think about that because God will give you an opportunity to do just that in a moment. Now I want to notice that something very special happened in David's heart after pouring out his complaint before the Lord. The Bible is going to show us that his assurance in God reached new heights. That is why the Bible now shares with us the confidence of David in verses 5 to 7. When all slighted him, when no one took care of him, what did David do? The Bible tells us he cries out to the Lord with confident expectation of God's supernatural help. Will you please listen to David's overflowing Confidence. The Bible says, I cry to you, O Lord. I said, you are my refuge, my portion 
in the land of the living. That is verse 5. I tell you, friends, nothing, listen, pleases the heart of God than to see one of his own expressing his or her confidence in God. David's confidence in God was so strong and steadfast that he spoke directly to God and of God saying, you are my refuge. He didn't say, you have provided a refuge for me, but you yourself are my refuge. And I see that was not enough to show the confidence David's David has in God, he goes a step further to say that the Lord is his portion in the land of the living. What is David saying? He's saying, the Lord is my sustainer, the Lord is my preserver, the Lord is my possession, and the Lord is my provision in life. Furthermore, in expressing total confidence in God, David says at the end of the Psalms, in verse 7, for you will deal bountifully with me. You see, it's so easy for us to talk about, to talk boldly about God when life is easy and comfortable for us. But to speak confidently in times of distress is quite another ball game. But David did that. So this story begins with what? Crying out to God. But it ends with confidence in God. The story begins with a burden on David's heart, but it ends with a blessing for David. Because he says what? You will deal bountifully with me. Not just small, but bountifully. How many is bountiful? A lot. So David has a special blessing he has discovered the special blessing God has hidden under his rock of trial. And that blessing is what? God dealing bountifully with him. So how does this message apply to us today? Well, first of all, if you are a genuine born-again believer in Jesus Christ, this is how it applies to you. First, thank Jesus today that he has hidden a special blessing under the rock of your trial. Just thank him for that. Turn your attention to Jesus today in the midst of your trials, even as David did. Don't focus on your circumstances. Turn your attention to God himself, as David did. Then tell Jesus today all of your troubles, whatever they are. Perhaps your trouble may be your failing health, financial struggles, family problems, facing jail time, feeling forgotten and forsaken, feeling like a failure in life, battling with depression and discouragement in life, or suicidal thoughts, or no jobs. Well, trust Jesus today that the righteous will surround you too to rejoice with you when he deals bountifully with you. Because this story is not only for David, it's for you and for me who believe in Jesus. Now, if you are not a believer in Jesus Christ, may I humbly say to you today that you cannot say the Lord is my refuge and the Lord is my portion in the land of the living. In your life of unbelief, you have no portion in the Lord. But thankfully, that can change for you today because God, in his unconditional and unfailing love, is giving you a wonderful opportunity to make Jesus Christ your refuge and your portion in life. The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart, that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That is the message of the gospel. Now, if you are a believer and you have all your troubles that you want to tell Jesus today, whatever they are, I mentioned some of them, 
some of you like uh, Chris that was back there, um, came from Michigan just two days ago. Orlando just came from Arizona not too long ago. And you want to pour your troubles, your complaint before God. Come here. I'll, I'll, I have people here who are ready to pray with you so that you too can begin to see God's supernatural help released into your circumstance. And if you are not a believer in Jesus Christ, you come to me and I will pray specifically for you to have salvation in Jesus Christ. So now the ball is in your court.